In this episode of NCAP TV, I'm going to talk to you about selling to commercial accounts. How to build up your commercial carpet cleaning base. It's a question we get a lot here at Excellent Supply. People wonder, how do I go about getting new accounts? How can I build a successful base of commercial carpet cleaning accounts? In this episode, I'm going to walk you through A to Z, how to build a strong foundation of commercial customers. So stick around. I think you're going to enjoy this one. Okay, so you want to become more successful at commercial carpet cleaning, build up a good solid base. It's great, it's, it's wonderful to think about because it supplements your income. It's also awesome because you can set up um, accounts that are really run by themselves. You can have people out there working at after hours when you're not running your residential route. In fact, many guys that get successful at commercial carpet cleaning leave residential alone. That's what I did in my commercial carpet cleaning business through the years. I was just commercial only, no residential. Did a little residential for a short window of time, hated it, got right back into commercial. Now, to start with, you want to have two things, a website, a commercial website, not a residential website. If you have a residential website, spin off a commercial version that's exclusively commercial. Try to position yourself as a commercial expert that you can fix their commercial carpet cleaning problems and have marketing material to go along with that. Flyers, everything is geared and designed for commercial. So that's the first thing. Then when you go to sell, you're actually gonna go out into the field and talk to people. Now I recommend wearing a shirt with a logo like my excellent supply release it shirt you see here, something like this. Obviously this is for this business. Yes, you're going to need to go out and get face-to-face. -face. Talk to people, get in front of them, toe-to-toe, one-on-one. If you're not comfortable selling to people, if it's not your thing, hire someone that can do it for you. But this type of selling requires a little bit of face-to-face -face interaction. If you think you're just going to advertise or have a website or social media and they're going to come to you, not going to happen very often. So get yourself into a position where you can go out and do some FaceTime selling and devote some time each week. Maybe two or three hours a week is all it really takes. Perhaps one afternoon a week you could designate a Tuesday or a Wednesday afternoon, for example. Earlier in the week is better than later in the week. Monday and Friday are really not the best for selling. Set up some time to go out there and get in front of customers so that you can begin to develop your customer base. Now, I like to think of it as farming. Pick a list of customers that you have in your area, potential customers that is, businesses, buildings that look promising, and zero in on those businesses. So you make yourself a list and you continue to work and stay in front of them. Develop those leads and you'll quickly have a quiver of customers or potential customers, I should say, that will become your customers. And so you work with those prospects and begin farming with them. Now let's talk about your presentation. Presentations are where it's really gonna happen, so build a solid presentation. Get into the habit of being conversant with your customers. Help them see that you are the expert. What you wanna do when you get in front of them is really lean towards doing a demo. You want them to take a test drive, just like when you're buying a car, you do a test drive. Same thing here, you want your customers to be able to experience what you're gonna be able to provide. So you wanna do an A-B comparison take a soiled area of the carpet and clean it and leave an adjoining area that's dirty uncleaned so that they can see what you can bring to the table. It's been said that a presentation without a demonstration is just a conversation. And that's certainly the case when it comes to commercial selling. You really need to do a demo. So do a demo in a soiled area. Let them see how good the carpet's going to turn out. You can take your end cap equipment in there and just tear it up, make it look great. I'll share another trick at the end of the video that will help you land sales for sure in this demo area. So we'll come back to that towards the end of the video, so stay tuned. Now, when you're doing your presentation, you want to inspect their carpet and do a carpet inspection as you go through. That's important that you do a carpet inspection and that too we're going to leave on as a bonus item towards the end of the video i'll walk you through this form and help you understand why it's so important to use a form like i've got here 
that I used in my business for years in my commercial carpet cleaning business, Clean Step. And uh, I'll share with you some of the points that are here so that you can see how practical it is to get in front of them because you want to be the expert, as I mentioned a moment ago. It's kind of like when you go to the doctor. The doctor goes in, you say, well, I don't feel good. And so he just writes a prescription. Not normally. First, he asks you questions. He checks your blood pressure, your temperature. He says, how long have you been feeling this way? Does it hurt when I press here? Whatever. He's going to evaluate you as a patient. Now, if he just wrote the script and uh, didn't give you that evaluation, you think, man, what kind of doctor is this? And in fact, it might be the same prescription he's writing all day long because it's flu season. But if he doesn't ask the questions, he's not the pro. And it's the same thing with you. As you go in, you use this carpet inspection to demonstrate that you're the professional. Again, I'm going to circle back to the carpet inspection a little later in this video. Now, if you do that, if you demonstrate that you're the expert, then what you want to do now is continue to follow up with them. Continue to work that farming mode that we talked about at the onset, because you're going to work with that list and continue to stay in front of them. Now, it might be that today you're talking to them about carpet cleaning, but let's face it, they weren't thinking about carpet cleaning. They've got other things on their plate when you want to go and sell. In fact, I'm going to tell you that 99% of the time, today is not the day they're going to be buying carpet cleaning. That's why it's important to take on that farming mode mentality. A farmer doesn't just go out and plant his seeds and expect to harvest on the same day. It takes time, so you're going to continue to go back and cultivate. Because keep in mind, you've cherry-picked a list, this quiver that you've filled, of quality potential prospects are worth going after so you're going to continue to go back and work on them continue to go back and try to get in front of them and help them see that you're going to fix the problem so eventually here's the thing eventually they're going to need carpet cleaning eventually they're going to have an itch and they're going to have you scratch it because you're the guy that's been there the whole time offering free information building value and helping them to see that you're a problem solver that can fix the problems that they have with their commercial carpet so go and take that list continue to stay in front of them continue to work with them call back on them make return visits on those potential customers until they finally need you and then when that moment comes you'll be their carpet cleaner so earlier when we talked about doing a demo I said I was going to save a little special bonus perk for you at the end of the video. Here's your first bonus point. What you want to do is talk about are there any problems in your building that come to mind? Things that are driving you crazy. And if they don't say yes, a lot of times they won't right off the bat, say do you have any spill stains that have come back? Invariably they've had a spill stain that's been cleaned and it comes back. That's common with commercial carpet cleaning. So here's what you do. You go and you take picture the carpet we got our big giant circle of spill stain what you want to do is cut that in half like what we did right there you're gonna clean one side of it you're gonna clean one side of the spill stain and leave the other side uncleaned so we've got a clean side and we've got a dirty side and what you do it's real simple you say I'm gonna leave it and let you walk on it for a few days. And if you see the side that I cleaned doesn't come back like it did in the past when it was cleaned by the last cleaner, when you see that my side stays clean, can I check back with you in a few days and we'll get serious about carpet cleaning? Let me tell you, that trick will get you customers. It's got me, big customers in the past, fixing half of a spill stain. So when you do a demo, clearly fix one side using a good end cap process so that you can guarantee that it's not going to come back. Now if you're using end cap clean DS2 we use a 50-50 dilution for spill stain. We've talked about that in other videos so I'm not going to go into it here but when you do that spill stain treatment on one side of the spill and leave the other side unaffected as a point of reference then they can see how well you got that cleaned and they're going to take you on as a carpet cleaner. Now, earlier we talked about the carpet inspection form. Looking at our carpet inspection form, here are some things that I had on my carpet inspection form, and I'll walk you through and explain why these are important. There's 20 different points here. When was the last time the carpet was cleaned? That can tell you a lot. If they haven't cleaned the carpet in like eight years, then you know, well, this isn't a great customer. It's going to be a one-time, you know, one-trick pony. Not very promising. So the last time they had their carpet cleaned, can help you see 
how regular this account is going to be and it will help you to see is this something that you really want to try to refine and go after. The next one, what cleaning method was used the last time the carpet was cleaned? Again, that's helpful information. Was there any problem with recurring spill stains? Keep in mind, that's what we were just talking about a minute ago. With that recurring spill stain, I can fix that for you and it won't come back. Are spills wiped up promptly? Again, that's a good question just to show that you care and that you're interested in their carpets. What brands of spot cleaners have been used? So that's an important question. If they're using some junk spotter that's loading up the carpet and making it worse, and that's good to know so you can fix it. How frequently is vacuuming performed? What types of vacuum cleaners are used? Are they using upright vacuums? Inspect the vacuum cleaners. It's a good thing to do. Go ahead and look at their vacuums and note the condition of them if they're there in the building. Here's an important one. What types of entry walk-off mats are being used? Do they even have walk-off mats? Do they have sufficient walk-off mats? Could be an add-on to provide that for them, walk-off mats as well. Now here's an interesting question. Is the exterior surface asphalt, concrete, or other? You see, concrete outside will actually wipe their shoes clean, pulling soil off before they go into a building, whereas asphalt will actually generally contribute more oil to the environment. So you could explain, that's why you see this yellowing, brownish kind of d dingy uh, color here on your light blue carpet. It's coming in off that asphalt out there. Again, a question that helps them see that you're here to solve their problems. You're the doctor, you're gonna fix the problems. Is the carpet made of olefin, polypropylene fiber? Again, that loves oil. Olefin loves oil. So again, you're the expert if that's the case. Is the carpet cut pile or loop construction? Again, uh, loop construction can hold more soil down at the base underneath the, the compacted loops of carpet. So is it loop or cut pile carpet? Another question to ask. Is the carpet a glue down or a stretch installation? Glue down carpets tend to have more problems with wicking, recurring spills. Are there any observable installation problems? Definitely a good question. And perhaps that's something that you can fix if it's just a, a mild installation problem. Are there any wear problems, tears, burns, crushing, etc.? What is the overall soil condition of the carpet? Wow, we're down to the bottom and we're just now starting to get to the part about the soil conditions. You can see that you're positioning yourself as the expert. Is the carpet backing impacted with soil? So get down, pull apart the, the fiber, and look down at the backing of the carpet. Now this is a good selling point. If you can show them what's down at the bottom of the carpet, see the over on the side over here, you look down at the bottom, it's white. The latex backing is white, but over here it's black. You've got a problem. This is gonna take some work for us to get that impacted soil out of the backing of the carpet. That happens a lot with commercial glue down carpet. Are solid residues present such as gum or tar? Again, help them see that you're the expert. Are there any observable problem stain areas? And finally, number 20, identify furniture or obstacles in the cleaning area. Things that you're gonna have to work around. Obstacles that are gonna make it more challenging for you when you work up a proposal. And then finally, after all of that, write a proposal. Don't just write it on your business card and give them a price quote, but get, write up a proper proposal. Show them that you are a professional and that you're there to help them. So hopefully this will help you see how to build a good base of commercial customers. And hopefully it will help you to continue to max your end cap as you grow your commercial business. Please uh, share your comments below. Hit the like button, please. Subscribe. We appreciate it when you do that. And thanks again for watching this episode of NCAP TV.